It's a Bumblecast Mini, sponsored by Dove. And we are actually getting uh, to, into some standard questions. Dove has sponsored some standard ones, and all of these are coming from our email inbox. So don't thank us. Thank Dove for just being so super generous and awesome. Indeed. Here's a question to start us off from Certified Nobody. If you didn't have to worry about what Sega wanted and any potential legal issues, how would you incorporate Shade and the Nocturnus clan into the IDW com- comics? Hmm. I don't know if I would want to necessarily, but that's not the question. The question is, how would I? Uh, Sonic Chronicles has not been around for so long, and the thing is set up as after a major battle with Eggman. I think we would just need to retell the story in the comic in a brief way, or at least like do a one issue uh, overview of events and then pick up the narrative after they get back and Eggman's conquered the world again and go from there. Uh, From there, I guess it would be a matter of, exploring shade and her character and her position now that she's ex nocturnus and the lingering threat of X and what he might do with the twilight cage. Uh, I would imagine that the first story would be retaking the world from Eggman. And I guess that at some point you'd have to address Argus and all that, but uh, overall I would be kind of content for shade to just be free of the twilight cage and everything else trapped in the pocket dimension. Cause I don't know. A lot of the alien races don't really strike me as all that interesting outside of their initial appearance. And the nocturnists are not super interesting as villains outside of the fact that they're echidnas with high tech stuff. Mm-hmm. We, we've seen this kind of force before with like the battle birds or uh, shoot Eggman. I mean, maybe deal with Ix and the weird Twilight powers, but I, w- I would want that to kind of at least come to a conclusion, wrap a bow on that, not make it a perpetual thing to constantly return to or deal with. Mm-hmm. That would make some sense. I think it would be interesting. Another element, you know, just to throw in there, just to turn Sonic into this big mishmash of stuff. Wait, that's what he already is. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a question from Big Sonic Fan Patrick. Do you know if the Werehog Curse functioned like the Werewolf Curse? For example, if Tails, Cream, or others were bitten, would they become a werebeast? I don't think so. Because werewolfism passes through the bite of the individual's curse, whereas Dark Eye energy can infect anyone anywhere. Yeah. It could infuse with anyone. It just seems to cause them to lose their inhibitions. So yeah, but I think f- if Werehog Sonic bit somebody, it would just hurt. Yeah, but it's funny to imagine him going around and biting people and turning them all into where <laughs> thems. Sure, it's fun. <laughs> the idea of tiny little like where puppy bunny cream is adorable. But <laughs> if we're going for something that's a semi canonical answer, I don't think so. No, it is adorable until she's gnawing your face off. <laughs> <laughs> until she lunges at you. <laughs> All right. Hey, here's a question from Liam D. Why everyone hates Jeffrey St. John? I shall reiterate that I have read very little Archie. I looked at his history on the wiki and asked and still have not found a satisfying answer. Uh, it depends on who you ask. It's complicated. A lot, of it, <laughs> a lot of it comes from just the history of the book and the character over the years. Some of it is metacontextual. But part of it stems from, one, he was significantly older than the main cast and was extremely grabby with Sally when she was significantly younger than he was. Uh, was a rival to Sonic for no really particular reason outside of a sense of entitlement. It was kind of a shallow thing, and it just made him a jerk. Yeah. And then with the revelation that he was a sleeper agent for Ixus Nagas, there was a degree of be- sense of betrayal to him. So there's other reasons outside of the narrative itself that I feel like have kind of poisoned the perception of the character. 
And that's not necessarily fair to the character himself, because he's been handled by multiple writers, each with their own direction to him. So I particularly found him as somewhat tragic, flawed, sure, but in a tragic sense, and was kind of hoping to get him to come around the corner and become the hero that he actually acted like all this time. But we never got there because reboot. Mm, Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, kind of a crappy James Bond XP wannabe anyway. Eh. Eh. Mike Z has a question. What's those component things that can repair Nicole in Sonic Universe number 97? I don't remember. Um, And it's hard to reference because that issue never came out. (laughs) Uh, Shoot, what was Nicole's state after that point? Because that was right after... uh... I guess her components got a little fried by, oh, what was it? Maybe it was Phage attacking the uh, Sky Patrol during during the uh, finale to the Unleashed arc. And I think that's where she was damaged, and so it was going to be uh, part of getting repaired from there. But it's been a long time, and we're never going to get to resolve that. Mm-hmm. Uh, thanks for reminding us. Here's a question from Beepus Boopus. <laughs> fantastic name i love it <laughs> it is very entertaining it's very fun to say beepus boopus do all metal sonics have the same memory slash brain chip or are they all different people i wouldn't say they were fully realized people but they did seem to have different personalities in each incarnation so i'm inclined to say that they were different individuals in terms of like full personality, full people status, that would be the Metal Sonic that turned into Shard eventually. Mm-hmm. But he was like uniquely advanced. Mm-hmm. And then once we got towards about my run, we had the Metal Sonic that was just synonymous with the game version. All right. Here's a question from Tony C. Ian, I remember you offering your services to D- to DC when that uh, Sonic Adventure homage happened in the Batman book. That makes me wonder, what are your favorite Batman characters and storylines? Personally, I love Batman in Nightfall, and I have a guilty pleasure for the Batman who laughs. What about you too, Kyle? Favorite Batman thingy? Uh, Oh my goodness. I'm mostly inclined to lean towards the animated series from the 90s and onward. Uh, That was kind of my Batman. I mean, yeah, what else? What else? (laughs) Animated series. Comics too. Legend. Well, yeah, I guess. Uh, year one, I still feel like, is an excellent exploration of Bruce coming into his own. Mm-hmm. I still like year one. And uh, favorite characters? Oh, uh, comic storylines. You know, sticking with that. I thought Hush was fun. Mm-hmm. It was kind of a, a nice parade of all the rogues gallery, and the art was gorgeous. And probably don't need to think too hard about it, but that's okay, because it's, you know, it's Batman. It's goofy. Just run with it. Uh, what's that arc where Gotham City gets, uh, like, quarantined? Oh, uh, No Man's Land. That's right, yeah. Uh, I thought that was, like, really kind of interesting. I never read that one all the way through. Yeah, it's a bit uh, long. I actually, quote-unquote, read it as an audio drama. So, that was fun. Oh, wow. That was interesting. But, um... Arkham Asylum and Arkham City were great. Oh, Arkham Asylum was uh, was pretty cool. Yeah, I still haven't played City yet, but City's the best one. Yeah, easy peasy. And I just kind of pretend that Arkham Knight didn't happen. Uh, <laughs> and of course, there's Batman Beyond, but that's yeah. Oh my! If we, if we get do- if we go down that rabbit hole, we're going to be here. We're going to be yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's going to take a long time. <laughs> Like, uh, oh man, favorite characters. The I've talked before at length about how the animated series' version of Mister Freeze was inspired. Yeah, so we we've covered that territory. It's it's good. I mean, really, did the animated series do anything wrong with the extended Rogues Gallery? Really, when you get down to it, I mean, maybe Killer Croc was a bit bland, but he's kind of a bland character anyway. 
I'm an angry crocodile man. Yeah, whatever. Okay, oh. Bane. They did Bane dirty in his initial appearance because the creators didn't like him. Yeah, I was gonna say like but. there's yeah, I don't even remember much about Bane in in that. Bane is much but better was... in the uh, Harley Quinn show. <laughs> <laughs> But then again, everything yes. is better in the Harley Quinn show. <laughs> How much money would it take to go to tie a bumble cars to Harley Quinn Bane? <laughs> I love uh, that Bane. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, like, the animated series like almost got him is one of the most fun. Yep episode yeah we've talked about it before it's fantastic yep and the uh well, i can't remember what the name of the episode was but it's basically all one bad in scenario because it's barbara flipping out on fear toxin and nothing is sacred and that's where they kind of redeemed bane mm-hmm. in my eyes because he was just a nightmare <laughs> and some of the just the animation in some of the episodes like on leather wings was freaking gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Uh, second half of the Clayface origin episode, Feet of Clay, freaking beautiful, even to today. And not all the episodes were winners, sure. But, you know, early on, they were kind of playing with some of the old, more classic, uh, pulpy sci-fi stuff. And I appreciate it for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just, I like, I just like all the bat girls. Bat women. I, I mean, like the, every one of them's got something. There's something about a, a, every single one of them. They're like all great. So it, it's like e- even I Helena. A f- <laughs> but Cassandra is awesome. Cassandra's awesome. Barbara rules. <laughs> I mean, they're all fantastic. Stephanie, yes. If, if I had to pick one as my singular favorite, it'd be Nightwing. Well, yeah, and I, like. <laughs> All, all the skill as of Batman, but without any of the baggage and ten mm-hmm. times the swagger. He was the cool one. <laughs> I wanted to be Nightwing so bad. He can make a mullet work, Kyle. Yeah. That's a superpower unlike any other. <laughs> I kind of like how uh, Nightwing is like, you know, he tries to be like Batman sometimes, but, you know, clearly he's not. <laughs> Yeah. That's what makes him kind of funny. It's like everyone gives him everyone gives him crap for it, and that's fun. But when it comes down to it, like yeah, he's a badass. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> ah, good stuff. Good stuff. I think that's enough for now. We've we've gone on for this one for a little bit, but thank you for that one, Tony. Here's a question from Maria F. Here's a question from Maria F. How would the dynamic be between Tikal and Shadow? Since she is a kind-hearted girl, I think it would be positive. It wouldn't be antagonistic. I mean, she would be hopeful and encouraging and optimistic, and Shadow would be his usual grumpy, broody self. Mm-hmm. But I would imagine he would see a lot of Maria in her, and it would awaken with him a need to be less of a jerk. Yeah. Let, let's not... However, her pleas for... Her pleas for him to maybe, you know, be a little more pacifistic would go on deaf ears. Yeah, let's maybe not have a retread of Mobius 30 years later. What is anything <laughs> there? No, let's, let's not. Let's not. Let's not do that again. No, thank you. We got a question here from Tradgore. Tradgore! Five Alve Clam shows up in several weird spots back in your time writing back in Archie. Was this an inside joke between the staff, or does Bivalve have some sort of tendency to show up wherever he feels like? It started out as a joke. I think the, I think I the answer is the, yes. <laughs> I took it too far <laughs> and had a kind of back pocket idea that Bivalve was one of many. Mm-hmm. He was Legion, and they all answered to one gigantic cybernetic clam called the Mother of Pearl as in Pearl <laughs> script. Mm-hmm. And I remember saying this to some of my staff or friends at a con and just the peals of laughter that erupted. I'm like, yes, this is a wonderfully terrible idea. And then John Gray. 
<laughs> oh, he wholeheartedly endorsed it. Uh, yes. Uh, but alas, there was nowhere to actually do it. Alas, alas, the uh, the book got rebooted before we could have a, a true mother of pearl. Uh, <laughs> stupid freaking pun. It's great. <laughs> Only Big stands above vi- bivalve. <laughs> Here's a question from Damashi the Chaotic. Does Metal Sonic still have the minor copy ability he had in Rivals 1, 2, Free Riders, etc. in the IDW continuity? Assuming he still has it, could he have copied Silver's ESP like he does in Rivals to free himself? Had Starline not intervened in issue 14? What are the limitations? And did Eggman find workarounds for the issues this copy tech gave Emerald? Well, the last time I tried to reference it, I got a note back saying he can't do that. So I'm inclined to say no, he doesn't have it by default. Eh. Um, <laughs> as for the copy tech in Emerald, I don't, th- it's been a bit since I looked at Battle and Battle's continuity is kind of fuzzy anyway. Not fuzzy, funky. But I think Emerald is working on a completely different hardware than Metal Sonic. So it's like comparing apples and oranges. And there you go again, bending the Sonic lore to your will. <laughs> Once again, it's you, Ian. It's always been you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tyu Lennon SFD has a question. I'm just wondering what's the deal with social media characters like Irish the Hedgehog? As far as I know, he's one of a kind. Is he just a one-off thing? Is any use of him prohibited? Would you like to see more holiday special characters? I was not really part of the team at the time. I'm fairly confident in assuming that was just a promotional stunt to build social media presence. And it works. Yeah. But I I wouldn't really bank on the canacity of Irish the Hedgehog. <laughs> I would. Maybe you should, well, too. Of course you would. Well, uh, what's that supposed to mean? Because you sow chaos, Kyle. I mean, it's funny. It is. <laughs> I, don't argue, I ain't arguing with that. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Let's see. Um, the one I really would like to see is Tribot. Like, for real. But, uh, yeah. It seems kind of like a missed opportunity. But, oh, well. Here's one from Jonathan L., in the IDW setting, are there any laws regarding AI rights? Would Omega and Bell be protected by laws the same way Sonic and Tails are? Would creating a sapient AI require any notification to the government? And would the creator legally be regarded as their parent? I don't know. <laughs> and would uh, Eggman care? The answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in general, I don't think the Sonic's world is compatible with AI. I, I don't think their technological level has reached that point. I think Eggman is still the outlier and the characters that have resulted from him are kind of just showing how much of a genius he is. But I, from what we, we have seen of Sonic world, which is extremely limited, I don't think AI rights and utilization is a concern. It's just, Eggman occasionally builds a bot that can think for itself. <laughs> occasionally. You mean usually. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Here's this one from Sir Bibton. If you could rename certain characters like Sally, Amy, Nicole, etc. to have proper Sonic names, what would you name them? Names based on their looks, traits, skills, and so on. It always bugs me that all other characters have these unique descriptive names, and then there's just Amy. It certainly doesn't help the case for her in particular that she's anything more than just the obligatory female protagonist counterpart. Hey, she's a lot more than that now. You take that back. <laughs> Counterpoint, Miles Prower. Yes. That has nothing to do with Tails. Tails is a nickname. Yeah. And, you know, he is not Tails the Fox. That is officially not his name. No. So I get where you're coming from, but I personally don't have a problem with it. I like there being a little bit of variety uh, breaks up the stagnation of noun, the noun. <laughs> so you know, 
you aren't necessarily pigeonholed into it. Like Dr. Starline doesn't follow that. He's not Dr. Starline, the platypus. It's not Dr. Eggman, the human. <laughs> Maybe he should be. Why be a human when you can be a genius? <laughs> I'm not opposed to there being a bit of variety. You know, mix it up a little bit. You have Antoine de Colliet, you have Sally Acorn, you have Amy Rose, and they're all around Rotor the Walrus. It it works out. <laughs> Uh, I like that. Uh, I, I kind of like the idea of like Sally. I'm going to call her what? Squirrel the chipmunk? <laughs> <laughs> <You're> like, what? <laughs> I mean, because Sally herself, she was, you know, a strategist. She was a tactician. She was the smart, level headed one. So what would you call her? Thinky the chipmunk? <laughs> It doesn't really work. And I think Sally Acorn is just a neat name, especially since Sally itself translates to princess. So in that regard, she is following the convention. Smarty the Smarterson. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, the chipmunk. It's a good one. Uh, I mean, Nicole is actually already kind of there. She's Nicole the Hololinks. Yeah, that kind of evolved over time. But... Yeah, yeah. It took a while to get there. Uh keep this up you're gonna have to come up with a shark named jump i like that i like that <laughs> i do too <laughs> thank you thank you chad <laughs> and our last question is from metal skulk bane do you ever worry about the line between alternative character interpretation and completely different person can one even be a fan of the shredder or the flash when their personality can be so wildly different and there's barely any core to them? Take Bumblebee, for example. Between different cartoons, she was a sassy action girl, shy nerd, tough mom, and a giant yellow robot. Wait. <laughs> uh, and one of those one of the one of those was not <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind the different interpretations of said giant yellow robot. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> of which there are many. Uh I, maybe years ago, I would have been more hung up on it. You know, what is the true incarnation? But over time, I've learned that you, there is no controlling personal perception. You know, if you're a fan of the Shredder, then by default, I assume that you're a Ninja Turtles fan and you like the dude with the spiky armor. And you can go from there and say, you know, you like the goofy 80s version. You like the utterly terrifying version out of... Oh shoot! A number of. <laughs> I was gonna say most uh, most incarnations of him are kind of terrifying. <laughs> the utterly badass one from the Batman crossover. It's you know, saying you're a fan of something, you know, doesn't necessarily need to be a deep down qualifier. It's a, it's the beginning of a conversation. Yeah. You know, you like the Flash. There's so many different Flashes, and you know what? That's good. That's fine. What is it about this particular incarnation that you enjoy? And, you know, let us celebrate that enjoyment together. Yes. Same thing can be applied to Sonic is there's been multiple interpretations of Sonic over the years, even within just the modern format, which era, which incarnation is your favorite. Then I'm glad you enjoy it. The secret is never telling anyone Try you're a fan of anything. <laughs> <laughs> trying to trying to nail down a singular vision within long running multimedia franchises is a fool's errand. Yeah, you know, yeah. You like what you like. Especially and when there are multiple incarnations of it. Yeah, like if you don't care for it, that's fine. Don't rain on somebody else's parade, you know? I have extremely heated opinions of the Thundercats reboot. Yeah. From, God, when was that? The mid aughts? Like 2011. Yeah. So, but you know, even though I have scathing critiques of how it was handled, if somebody like genuinely enjoyed it for what it was, I'm happy for you. I'm glad you can just consume it and be happy and not sit here being a curmudgeon like me. <laughs> you know, Thundercats roar. Not my bag, but, you know, some folks found it funny. So I'm glad they enjoyed it. 
Mm-hmm. I make no secret. I am not a fan of Adventures of. Just, I I don't find it particularly funny, but there are folks who really enjoy it, and it does do a lot of things right for Sonic. So it is not invalidated. It is so. It's not saying that's the one true Sonic. Sorry, Metal Sonic. There's no there's no answer <laughs> to your request. If, if it's a big sprawling franchise, then you know you can like your segment of it, and that's okay. That's okay. I feel like that's a wholesome note to end on. Yeah, so we'll cut it off there before one of us manages to ruin it, because <laughs> if it ain't going to be you, it's going to be me. Big thank you to Dove for being super generous and sponsoring all of these standard Q&A in this special. If you want to be as cool as Dove and sponsor some standard questions, or if you want just a Bumblecast mini of your own, head over to patreon.com slash Bumblecast, ko-fi.com slash Bumblecast, or become a YouTube member. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and we will see you next time on the Bumblecast. Insert joke ruining the wholesome ending here. No! (laughs) (laughs) Bye. Alternatively, (laughs) I'm awful too. (laughs) 